Hello, welcome to Learn Family University's course, Student Mind Frames for Online Learning. Our presenters today will be Ms. Carla Strecker. She is the Special Education Supervisor for Learn. Her contact information is on the screen. I'm Pamela Santer. I'm the Interim Coordinator of Online Learning for Learn, and my contact information is on the screen. Please contact us with any questions, and we're happy to help you and your students in any way that we can. We will cover three topics in this course. In video one, we will cover empowering children in productive struggle. In video two, we will talk about student mind frames for online learning. And in video three, we will talk about mind frames that you as a family member and caregiver can use to support your child. Before we get started, um, we do have a small disclaimer. You know your child best. In, we're going to share some strategies with you that experts and other parents have said they have found helpful in supporting their students during distance learning, but you know your child, please take the strategies that you think will help your child and leave the rest behind. The mind frames for students that we discuss in this section are the mental attitudes and habits that we hope to cultivate in all young people in all learning settings. We hope that you will agree that these are important attributes for learners to develop, regardless of where they go to school. To get a little academic, the following mind frames focus on self-regulation, or the ability to control and direct one's behaviors, emotions, and thoughts in the pursuit of long-term goals. Simply put, these are the habits that we hope to foster in children and youth. And once these habits are attained, the result is that the children go on to become their own teachers. They continue to learn independently, far beyond the boundaries of adult-initiated learning. They develop a skill set that enables them to create, innovate, and think creatively. I know that growth mindset is something that you might have heard a lot about. So just as a quick review, the concept of growth mindset was developed by Carol Dweck after a lifetime of careful and precise research work. She claimed that growth mindset, which are a way of thinking in a particular circumstance, have the power to inspire different goals and shape views about effort. But she has never claimed that there is a state of mind called growth mindset. Her research focuses on growth mindset as a way of thinking in a particular circumstance not as an attribute of a person. Dweck taught us that all of us see the world at times in two different ways. First, the belief that one's intelligence or abilities can be changed, or that our intelligence and our abilities are fixed and unchangeable. The evidence is clear. We can change our intelligence and our abilities but some children give up before they figure that out. Your interactions with your children can help them see the truth. They can learn. So as you know, interact with your children, note their effort in complex tasks, note the tools that they use, note the approximations of success, help them recognize when it's time to turn to a growth mindset, recognizing that it's not always necessary but sometimes it's really powerful. And as you do this, your child will begin to strengthen their ability to use a growth mindset, which will enable them to eventually internalize the overarching mind frames crucial for their learning. This brings us to the type of tasks that teachers assign. At Learn, we are proponents of rigor and productive struggle. Children should be regularly grappling with ideas, concepts, and terminology. There is a difference between tasks that are difficult and those that are complex. Difficult tasks just take more work. They take more time, but they are not the type of tasks that require complex thinking, extensive background knowledge, or bringing different ideas together. Rigor requires complexity. Rigor requires productive struggle. So please let your child struggle. 
When considering how much struggle is enough for your child, just think about the story of Goldilocks and the three bears. A just right level of struggle is really good for learning. By that, we mean that the tasks are not too hard, but also not too boring. So please do not attempt to rescue your child every time you see the signs of struggle. It's part of the process of learning. But if you do see tasks that are really boring or your child is not building stamina, then it's time to advocate for some more complexity. So why should you let your child struggle? Well, let's talk about it in terms of those New Year's resolutions that all of us might be working on right now. Imagine that your goal is fitness and getting into shape before summer. So you join a gym. And when you're at the gym, you're lifting weights. And at the first sign of struggle, a well-meaning bystander lifts the weights for you every single time. Are you ever going to get stronger or fitter? Will you ever discover just how strong you can be? No matter how pure our intentions, the same concept implies when we refuse to let our children struggle. If we always solve problems for our children, they will never learn to solve the problems by themselves. And we're also implying that they're not capable of overseeing obstacles or succeeding on their own. And that actually conditions them to give up at the first sign of difficulty. Angela Duckworth, the author of Grit, The Power of Passion and Perseverance, explains, the most important thing when you see your child struggle is to let them struggle a little bit longer than maybe is comfortable for some of us. Those few moments of discomfort teaches your child to persevere instead of giving up or waiting for others to come to the rescue. They also learn that they are capable, which allows them to develop grit resilience, and growth mindset. I'm going to turn it over to my colleague, Carla, who will help talk, who will talk with you about how to empower your child when they struggle. Yeah. So as Duckworth suggests, watching your child struggle and become frustrated isn't easy. It's uncomfortable and sometimes even agonizing. So what can you do to empower your child to keep trying without doing all of the work yourself? One strategy is to listen and empathize. Sometimes children are not expected to help and all they need is a listening ear. Practicing listening when your child vents to you about a problem. If needed, take deep breaths as you fight the urge to jump in situ with situations. The next time your child comes to you with a problem, try one of the following responses. Provide choices such as, would you like to keep trying, take a break or ask for help? Validate your child's feelings. You seem frustrated. I understand why you feel that way. Ask your child open-ended questions such as, how do you think you can solve this? Or what solutions have you tried? What else could you try? You can brainstorm together, but let your child take the lead and don't push an agenda. If your child is truly stuck, you can try prompting with questions like, what do you think would happen if you tried blank? You could also ask, what do you need from me? This tells your child that you are there for them in a supporting role, but still gives them ownership and agency. A second strategy is to model the attitude that you want to see. When you encounter challenges yourself, model the same language and attitude you'd like to see from your child. Use phrases like, this is hard and I need a break, or this is hard, I'm gonna keep trying. You might also say, this is hard, will you help me? Ask your child to help you brainstorm solutions to your problem or challenge. Avoid expressing negative opinions of yourself or making comments like, I can't do this. Take deep breaths and tell yourself, I can handle this if you're losing your composure. Focus on the positive. Was a lesson learned? Did you improve? Did you overcome the struggle? And how great did it feel? These strategies teach children to accept that sometimes things are hard and that sometimes we get frustrated and that's okay. It's not about being perfect or figuring out something for the first time. In fact, it's even more of an accomplishment to stick with it, try different strategies, and eventually make progress. A third strategy is to build confidence with age-appropriate tasks. As early as possible, boost your, boost your child's feelings with confidence and capability by allowing him to do age-appropriate tasks on his own. 
This may include getting dressed, picking up toys, preparing foods like cereal or toast, making a bed, or doing other chores, depending on your child's age. Yes, it's often faster for us to do these tasks ourselves, but being patient and letting your child master these skills independently shows them that you, they can do hard things. For a fourth strategy, you can remind students or remind children of past struggles and accomplishments. Remember, the more children struggle their way to progress or success, the more willing they will be to stick with challenges in the future. It's helpful to remind them of previous obstacles they've overcome and problems they've solved. Remind your child of tasks that were once difficult and became easier with time. When has your child struggled, but eventually triumphed or improved? What are your child's strengths? How did he or she grow in those strengths? You can also talk to your child about times you have struggled and have been rewarded in the end. Remind your child that everyone struggles. It's natural, normal, and even good. With struggle comes growth. There are many examples of famous people who have persevered through challenges only to achieve incredible success. Michael Jordan is one of them. What would happen if he didn't make the varsity team the first time he tried out? What if he had just given up? As a fifth strategy um, to help your child, you can teach problem solving skills. In addition to brainstorming and asking your child open-ended questions, you can directly teach problem solving skills by teaching a simple process. Step one, what am I feeling? Help your child label how he or she is feeling about the situation. Step two, what is the problem? Ask your child to describe the problem. In most cases, ensure that your child is taking responsibility for his or her role rather than pointing fingers. Step three, what are the solutions? Brainstorm, brainstorm potential solutions. They don't have to be good ideas, but you can because you can narrow them down later. Step four, what would happen if blank? Discuss what might happen if your child tried each solution. Role playing is also appropriate at this step. Is the solution safe? Is it fair? How will others feel? Step five, what will I try? Have your child choose one solution to try. What if it doesn't work? Discuss why and choose another. Encourage your child to keep trying until the problem is solved. As a final strategy to help your child with struggle is we can, you can know and try to intervene and know when you need to lend a hand. Of course, this doesn't mean that you should never help your child. Step in when there's a safety concern or if your child is frustrated with a task that is not developmentally appropriate can also step in when there's a skill that needs to be learned before your child can succeed at the task. You also might choose to step in if your child has tried multiple strategies and persevered, but is still struggling. In this case, offer guidance and help and then discuss what your child learned and praise the effort and progress. Success and achievement aren't necessarily about talent. It's all about the willingness to struggle and keep going. The good news is that you can teach this essential ability. Unfortunately, there's only one way to teach this valuable lesson to your children, is to let them struggle. It isn't easy, but with the six strategies that we've shared here, you can equip your child with many useful skills and tools along the way. Make the shift from, I've got this, to, you've got this, and your resilient, problem-solving, and greedy child will thank you. Remember that you're there to guide and not to run and interfere for them every step of the way. The snowplow parent who smooths the way for the child does him no favors. Author Andrew Solomon says that, when you banish the dragons, you banish the heroes. Give them a chance to be the hero of their own story. Appropriate levels of struggle build resiliency and confidence, two traits necessary to move to adulthood. Thank you, Carla. That is the end of video one. In video two, we will talk about student mind frames for online and in-person learning. That video is available now. We hope to see you there.